Bienvenue Welcome to Reporters here on France 24. I'm Mark Owen. In this edition, the COVID crisis on the island of Guadeloupe. The pandemic there has cast a spotlight on the inequalities between this French overseas territory and the French mainland. Harold Girard is our reporter. He's here now. Uh, tell us more about the inequalities that your report uncovered. In Guadeloupe, there's a proverb that says, someone who's resourceful is not a sinner. That means that someone who figures out the way around something is never in the wrong or in sin. It's in this spirit that we met many of the people we talked to for this report. First, at the hospital, where they lack resources and beds and ventilators to deal with the next wave of COVID cases. And in all of the families that we met who have to deal with serious problems with getting water. There are many places in Guadeloupe where there is no running water. The territory can be harsh on all levels, and that's what we've seen. Let's take a look then at the report by Arul Jira and Ashraf Abid. I'm going to put the breathing tube in, Mr. Kayol. Squeeze my hand. Squeeze one last time. Okay, Mr. Kayol. We're going to put you on your side. Apart from physical care, patients need emotional care, which they don't necessarily get all the time. Even when patients are in a coma, I like to recommend keeping the conversation going, putting things a little into context for the person. We're the link between them and the outside world, apart from their family when they come to visit. Guadeloupe is going through an unprecedented crisis. The intensive care unit at Pointe Pitre University Hospital has passed the peak of the second wave of COVID-19, but remains on alert. On the day of filming, 28 of the 29 ICU beds are occupied. Today, as is often the case on the island, geography is a considerable obstacle to accessing care. So right now, we're not sure we'll be able to admit the patient from Saint-Martin. How come? Because the helicopter won't be able to take off. Ah, yes, with this weather, there was no way. We're on orange alert, and it's a patient that can only be transported by helicopter. And so with these weather conditions, the helicopter cannot take off. This complicates access to treatment for those who are on the islands, notably Marie Galante, Les Saintes, Saint-Martin, they're all dependent on Guadeloupe. These are situations that we encounter all year round. It's because of our geographical situation. We're not lucky enough to be in mainland France and to have a university hospital 50 kilometers away that can take over. We're really dependent on air transport. Orange alert means heavy rain and strong wind. It is therefore impossible to travel. The university hospital itself has to relocate patients regularly, sometimes due to financial shortages. We don't have a cardiac surgeon in Guadeloupe. Cardiac surgery is done in Martinique, so our patients from Guadeloupe who require ECMO must be transported to Martinique. A new alert comes through in the afternoon. The condition of one of the patients is deteriorating. He must be taken to intensive care. The problem is that the last remaining bed has not been repaired. We need to find out what went wrong here. The managers were not aware the bed was broken. And there's no bed? The bed is broken. It's been broken for three or four weeks and apparently no one reported it. The last place in the unit is taken by a usually fit and healthy 39-year-old man. He doesn't understand. I went to the COVID emergency room. I already had a pain in my right side. They suspected renal colic, so they switched me to the regular emergency unit and they found nothing. So I thought it was getting better. I thought it would go away. And then a week later, I took a turn for the worse. I wasn't expecting to be affected at all. I'm fit and I play a lot of sport. My girlfriend has no symptoms at all. 
J'ai ma copine qui a pas eu tous les symptômes. At the height of the crisis, it was the teams of standby healthcare workers sent from Paris, which made it possible to keep the 44-bed intensive care unit open, a very limited resource for a territory of more than 400,000 inhabitants. To make up for the lack of staff, several medical units had to take turns closing and reopening. Today, due to a lack of space, the hospital canteen is still being used to receive non-COVID-19 related cases. In Guadeloupe, there's been no second lockdown. Despite calls from the medical community, residents have been allowed a great deal of freedom of movement. But maintaining barrier gestures clashes with another problem, water. The island doesn't usually lack rainfall, but its rundown water distribution system leaks more than 60% of this water into the soil. The problem affects the whole territory and means a lack of a vital resource in the midst of a pandemic. It's been almost two months that we've had absolutely nothing, really not a drop, not a trickle, nothing at all, and it's getting difficult. Daily life is complicated. Sharing the children is a problem. Doing the dishes is a problem. The toilets are a problem. And especially now, in the COVID-19 era, when you have to wash your hands regularly. So at this point, it's becoming unbearable. The situation has been this way for the past decade. And today, it means protective measures are often inapplicable. This problem has been going on for years and years here in Gourbert. To get a few bottles of water, Jean goes to her brother's house. It's exhausting, especially after a day's work. We finish work, pick up the children from school, get them to do their homework, and then go back to fetch water. It's getting tiring. I have to pay? Yeah, yeah. Because I've got all these bottles to fill. OK. OK. A bit cheaper than the council's prices, all the same? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. We've got to think of the long term. There you go. Here's your water. Thank you. How kind. I'll send you the bill. The bill? <laughs> OK, see you tomorrow. OK, okay drive safe. See you tomorrow. Several organizations have been formed since the problems with the water system in Guadeloupe first emerged. They are all calling for acceleration to renovation work. How can we fight against the virus when we are obliged to move around, to fetch water from a relative's house, to fetch water from a public reservoir, from the fountains where everyone comes and goes? How can we really respect these protective measures? The inconsistency of this situation has just been explained, that the most important sanitary measure is not being provided for. If we do not receive a response, then we will take these demands to the higher state level so that they can be answered. The citizens of Coupère, and generally speaking, of Guadeloupe, are not sub-citizens. The island is now at an impasse. On three quarters of its territory, more than half of the drinking water is lost. The renovation work to the system is regularly delayed. The association estimates the total cost of a complete renovation at 1 to 1.5 billion euros. Public authorities have invested 94 million euros since 2014 in several repair and sanitation operations. For many, it's a laughable amount in the face of rising budget cuts. We meet Regine at her home on her first day off this week, following five 12-hour shifts. She's the only nurse in the intensive care unit who collects data on the virus. She communicates this information to the mainland. Since the beginning of the crisis, she's been forced to study COVID-19 in her free time. 
It was very difficult for me to tell myself that I was going to be working in an office while my colleagues were understaffed at the patients' bedsides. If I don't do it today, I will have to do it in two months, and then I would have to recover two months of data, which would be much longer. It's tiring. It's tiring because I never really have a break from work at the moment. In 14 years of working at the ICU, it's the first time that I've wanted to stop. This desire has gone now, but I did want to stop at one point. The crisis stretches beyond the health sector. The island's economy is highly dependent on tourism, which is suffering due to the pandemic. In 2019, visitors spent 728 million euros within the territory. Forecasts for 2020 predict a 70% drop. The COVID-19 crisis has left local marketplaces, harbors and hotels empty, a brutal halt to earnings for those who rely on the tourist trade. The boat has gone out so little that it doesn't work anymore. No voltage, no battery. A boat that doesn't go out is a boat that's badly maintained. No customers, no excursions, no battery. The boat's abandoned. The port, the insurance, all that nonsense. If you don't have 40,000 euros to pay for all this, you won't survive. It's not possible. The number of online bookings we have on the site is down by 70%. Are you thinking of selling your boat? No, I won't sell my boat. When you've spent a lot of time with a boat like this, you really don't want to sell it. A lot of people have already asked me. I'm going to keep my boat. Why? Because, as they say, I'm a mother hen. Rudy is weathering the crisis. Deprived of his main source of income, it's fishing that now keeps him afloat. For others, the absence of tourists this year has been a fatal blow to business. Jean, a hotel manager who runs several businesses, will only spend a few more weeks in Santan. With this COVID-19 crisis, my massage business is my main income. My principal business activity today is massage because I don't have any more customers at the hotel. The owners are maintaining rent at 6,500 euros per month. The manager has no choice but to return to France. The bookings were gradually cancelled as time went on. The forecast is that everything is going to start up again on the economic level in Guadeloupe towards November 2021. So until then, I can't hold on, financially. As for many others, it's a forced departure. Neither business aid nor a state-guaranteed loan would allow her to keep her business. It's going to be hard to leave because I've been here for 11 years and I feel good here. It is an exceptional place which I have loved, deeply loved. And now it's going to be difficult. It's going to come as quite a blow. And our reporter, Aral Gira, is still with us. Aral, thank you so much for that fascinating report. It's quite scary to think that these things are happening. Um, to combat some of the problems that we saw in your report, um, the authorities are now building, what, a new hospital, which must be great news for the people of Guadeloupe. Yes, it's good news in principle because the French state has decided to invest more than 600 million euros for the construction of this new hospital. It's expected to have 14 operating rooms and 600 beds in all departments. But the problem with these plans by the authorities is that for the moment they haven't identified enough health care workers. There's a lack of personnel. So with this hospital, if there aren't heart surgeries in Guadeloupe, there will not be certain services without the personnel. 
un, un réel plus au niveau du personnel. We'll have the same problem. Même problème. It looks absolutely fantastic, but as you say, certain problems are there. What is the mood uh, among medical staff right now? We are waiting for the hospital, which is expected to open in 2023. So in the meantime, we are following the recommendations of the experts to respect social distancing, try to stay home as much as possible. Hospital workers have been disappointed by the government's decision to not impose a second lockdown in Guadeloupe. Many of the staff members who we met told us they've had their hopes dashed, they have sadly left the service. Ont quitté le service et c'est ce qu'elle regrette. That is so sad to think the people who do such an essential job are growing so low that they leave the actual service which is essential. Uh, the other thing that's essential, of course, I hold is, is water. Water shortages in Guadeloupe. This is really serious. It's a problem that has existed for years in Guadeloupe. It's important to know that about 61% of potable water that is lost to leaking pipes. It's not for a lack of warning the government. There have been a lot of organizations created to help, but it's been hard to improve the situation. The construction is frequently delayed. The people are exasperated. Harold Gia, thank you very much indeed. Our report by Harold and Ashraf Abid. You can see it again on our website, france24.com. The combat against COVID-19 continues, so please stay with us, but most of all, stay safe.